Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I had some business I had to take care of for a couple of weeks, so content's been a little slow, but all that's taken care of, and we are back to buckle down to 300B fun. We've got this 850 all tested out in stock form. You've seen that video. If you haven't, go watch it. Now we're diving into modifying this thing to turn it into something that really sounds good and does justice to these 300B output tubes. The first thing I noticed was the B plus on this amp is just way too low. The transformer actually puts out a lot of voltage. It's got it's a 385-0385 transformer, but we're only getting like 280 volts on the plate of the 300B, which just isn't enough. And there's also not enough head voltage going into the front end driver tubes to really make them create the voltage swing that a 300B needs. And so first order of business is getting the B plus up. We're going to jump this power resistor that is the first thing out of the rectifier tube between it and the choke. We're going to add a filter cap between the two chokes. We're also going to switch to a 5AR4 rectifier tube, which is a regular bottle shaped tube. You're going to lose this fancy looking Coke bottle China rectifier tube and don't care. Some people may think that looks nicer. If you want to go hunt down some boutique 5AR4 Coke bottle looking tube for the looks, have at it. We're going to use a tube amp doctor. The Gold Lion is another good modern production 5AR4. There's also the new old stock, which is going to cost you more money. They're probably a little more rugged than what we're using now. Do not buy a JJ 5AR4. It is not going to last in this amp. I think they're probably okay if you're using them in a guitar amp that has 250 or 300 volts or something like that. But when you start going over 400 volts, they arc out and blow up. They won't last five minutes. So don't waste your money on those. As far as hearing the difference in a 5AR4 or a rectifier tube in a single inlet amp, I don't think that's going to happen. When people are talking about that this rectifier tube or that rectifier tube sounds better, they're talking about amps that have very little capacitance in the um, power supply. They're also talking about push-pull amps that pull a lot of power when they're making watts, where an SE amp has a pretty steady pull on the rectifier tube, so there's not going to be any sag in the power supply. And so you're not going to hear any difference between one rectifier tube and another one. The only thing going to new old stock is that they are probably more rugged and you'll have less problems with them. I did jump ahead and I went ahead and soldered in the bypass link. And here's what the looked like before it was modified and the resistor we're bypassing is circled and I've also circled the spot where we're going to be putting the filter cap and here's what it looks like after the jumper wire has been put in place and this extra filter cap was put in. Both of these are very simple modifications. There's holes already in the board where you can install these parts, and then tag it onto the wire going to the second choke. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on showing you how to do that. I am going to show you how to replace the coupling capacitor, which is something that we really need to do as part of this modification, even if you're doing nothing else. To start with, we're going to use a couple of very inexpensive Mundorf M caps, just their basic caps, nothing special. And later, we'll probably try some of their higher-end coupling caps and see if I hear a difference. I've tried the Solene caps before for coupling, and I wasn't real impressed. But I've actually never tried these 
cheap Mundorf M caps, and we'll go over that in a minute when I show you how to do that. And so that'll be an interesting thing to see if I can hear any difference between their lower end and their mid-range, the aluminum oil caps that I normally use. The other thing I wanted to go over was the simulations I did on this power supply. And there's almost no difference in the ripple with this in place and not. Even with this RC network before the chokes, there's 45 volts of ripple before the first choke. So taking this resistor out changes nothing at the ripple of the B plus as it comes out of that 330 UF cap before it goes to the two boards. And with the with or without this resistor before the first choke with this these parallel not parallel series 33 UF caps which made a mistake last time I forgot when you put them in series it halves their capacitance so it's a, it ends up being a 16 UF that let me give a little sheet here where I look this stuff up um with this cap without this 47 UF cap that I added and but with the 330 UF and these two chokes with like I said with or without this resistor in place it's got 0.02 volts of ripple as it goes into the 300B2 boards. Bypassing this resistor and adding this 47 UF cap between the two chokes brings the ripple down to 0.0004 volts, which is absolutely nothing. And so Adding this cap between the two chokes really makes a big difference in how much ripple is at, seen at the tube. So it's well worth doing. And it's actually nice that they have two chokes so that we can do that. And it just baffles my mind why they wouldn't do that. And between these two resistors that go across these filter capacitors and then the a voltage divider that they've set up for raising the DC offset on the heater voltages for the 6S and 7 tubes, there's plenty of bleeder resistance built into this amp to drain the capacitors when you turn the power off, so we don't need to add a bleeder resistor. This amp has enough resistance between the B plus and ground to drain the caps in a reasonable reasonable amount of time. So, we can leave that alone. Um, the other thing good about these changes we've made is we've now got 410 volts on the plate of the 300B and 67 volts on the cathode. So, we've added, let's see, it was two, 380. We've added 30 volts to the B plus, which is pretty substantial. And we've also got the voltage potential up for the driver circuit so we can increase the swing. And if when we do go with the CAS code setup, we'll have enough voltage drop across the plate load resistor to be able to swing the voltage that we need on the grid of the 300B to get it really rocking and rolling. The other thing that I'm going to try, there's another forum post where this guy's swearing he's got an amp that's designed like this circuit that puts out 8 watts without clipping. And I don't believe it. He shows pages of math where he's calculated up how this thing's just like perfection. And, you know, he, he claims he has checked it, but he doesn't really, he never says... Well, I've actually checked it on an oscilloscope. And I think he's just depending on his math to, you know, that, that it's making 8 watts of clean power. And looking at his schematic and the inside of this amp in the schematic, the only difference that I see between the two circuits is there's, instead of a 33K resistor on the cathode of the second driver tube, 
there's a 15K resistor. So, hey, I may be missing something here. There may be change one resistor and it almost triples the power of this amplifier. I kind of doubt it, but we're going to give it a shot. That's another mod we're going to do before we get into just changing out the whole front end to the cast code setup. So, next I'm going to get the camera set up and show you how to replace this coupling cap. And then we're going to run it on the scope and then come back for some final words on this episode. Okay, now we got the camera going inside the amplifier and we can point out some stuff and I can do this on live video too. Here's where I bypassed this resistor and then you connect one end of this capacitor to this point right here on the board where the choke connects and then the negative side goes in this hole right here that's a ground for the circuit board and just make sure the negative stripe is over here and that's all we've done so far oh but we did I did replace this coupling cap over here and I wanted to do it first so I would know exactly what I need to do so I can show you step by step how to do it okay so you get a um, you get a nice hot soldering iron with the lid with the tip nice and tinned up, ready to go. And you apply some heat to this wire right here until the solder melts. And pull that, and pull that wire loose. That's the only wire you have to disconnect. And it doesn't even go through the hole. It it's soldered onto a like a solder blob that's on top of the bore. So the next thing you do is you remove these four screws, and the little stands stay in place. So it's not like a bunch of stuff's going to fall apart. Obviously, you want the tubes out. And then this board comes loose and we can turn it up like this. And then all you do at this point, make sure the, the tip's clean with it a little bit of solder tinned onto the tip. Sometime I'll do a little video about correct soldering procedures, but you heat this up and push on the coupling cap until it pulls until it pulls through like that and then I'm trying to it's a little more difficult trying to do it so you can see it on the camera but you heat that lug up get that get that one melted and then pull it through and then the cap's gone so the next thing I do is I get one of these little caps and I bend the leads like that on both sides and I go ahead and tin them with a little solder so they're easier to solder because this first hole you have to heat this up and then jab the the lead of the cap through and that's probably the hardest part of this it's not super difficult but it's it's the slightly tricky part and I'm not sure I'm probably blocking your view here, but I gotta do what I gotta do to get this thing soldered in without messing up this board. And it doesn't matter if it's even straight at this point, you just want to get it through the board like like that is. Then you can come over to the other side, heat it up, and turn it where it needs to go. Now there, there's a, this second hole that hasn't had anything put in it. So you can put the other lead into that second hole. 
And then at this point, you get the your solder, your soldering iron, nice and tinned up. You put the tip on the trace first to heat the board up, and then flow the solder into onto the board. and then around the lead. And then I go back over to this one I worked on before and reflow a little solder into it just to make sure that it's soldered really well to the board. And our coupling cap is installed. So then all you do at this point is we're going to screw this board back down to the amplifier. And again, the main reason this is necessary is this original, the original cap was only rated for 250 volts and in my opinion, it was also too high a value. The, even the schematic says a 0.47 UF, and this is a 0.56, and it's only rated at 250 volts. And raising the B plus without doing any modification to the front end, for the people that might want to just do this much modification to their amp, that don't feel comfortable getting in and unsoldering a bunch of the stuff around these tubes. You really do need to do this, and I just don't think those are very high-quality caps. Again, later we're going to come in and replace these with some higher-end uh, aluminum oil caps and see if we hear a difference. And you might want to do that. It may cut, turn out that they really do sound better, and you might want to do that right out of the gate. The nice thing is, because of the way these mount, we won't have to remove these boards to ch swap out these caps. We can just heat up this solder joint, pull the lead out, heat up the solder joint, pull the lead out, and put the new ones in the same way from the backside without having to lift the board up. It was only because it was these kind of surface mount caps they used that we had to get to the underside of the board to unsolder it. And then the last thing you need to do is heat up. I'm going to get a little fresh solder on my tip. And that's one of the key things to having clean solder joints is keeping the tip clean. I use this little Heiko um, thing with this gold kind of um, steel wool looking stuff inside it to keep the tip clean and then once you you know you just kind of go like this and then you before you go to solder something you melt a little fresh solder on the tip so it's all fresh and ready to go and then you hold put the solder iron on the wire making sure that the other end isn't up against some other component and we're all soldered back together. The other thing that I've talked to a friend about, these type of finned aluminum metal resistors, they're given a 25 watt rating because it's assumed that these are gonna be bolted down to a chassis or some other piece of metal and you're gonna have some heat sink compound between this and the chassis to help transfer the heat. And these are just floating in the air, and you can see that, like this lug right here, which the heat's gonna get transferred to, is almost touching this electrolytic capacitor. And I always pronounce that wrong. There's, it's electrolytic, or lytic. I, anyway, you just, you'll have to put up with me on that. Um, anyway, I wanna find some the, of the just plain ceramic cement resistors that are this same value and mount them more 
in th like this area right here, away from the capacitors and away from the output transformers. And I could probably spin this little ground lead around to get it away from it too. And that way the heat from these resistors isn't cooking these electrolytic capacitors because that's what kills them. They Heat is their enemy. It's the reason why on my personal amps, I mount these on the top side of the chassis, which I know is kind of unusual, but then you don't have the, that heat trapped underneath the chassis. And as you can see, it's got ventilation everywhere except where the heat is. I mean, if they were really going to do this right, I would have put some vent holes along the side here. Or, I mean, the, the other option, but I've, I'm scared how hard this is to drill. I've heard the stainless steel these are made out of is really hard to drill. And I may test drilling a little hole right here and if it's not too bad what I may do is mount these on the sides here and run some wires over to the circuit board and then these can be bolted to the chassis with some heat uh, heat compound underneath them and that would work too but the simplest thing is probably just going to be to get some cement type that are made to run in open air and not mount it to something and use them like that and again just kind of sh uh, show you the voltage points this is the here's where you would get the b plus out of the rectifier this is the b plus between the two chokes would be right here and this is the final b plus right here which also ends up being on this end so these brown wires are where the b plus jumps over to these main boards and we'll cover the the wiring and stuff and how all this front end is done here's where you measure the the voltage at the plate I'm measuring the cathode voltage right here and here and this I use for my ground terminal for my voltmeter because it's connected to this ground, there's this ground, that, you know, that, that's kind of a good common ground point that's easy to get to. So, the next thing we're going to do is, I want to put this thing on the scope and just see what raising the B plus does to the power output, the clipping points, and see if anything's improved enough to make this modification worthwhile is kind of like a stage one thing and also I want to listen to it like this because a lot of times what raising the B plus on the output tubes does is it just generally makes the amp sound better and there's Dolly with her squeaky toy I don't know if you could hear that but anyway the last thing that we're probably going to experiment with too before we put it on the scope is I'm going to change out this I believe it's a 33k resistor for a 15k resistor it's the resistor here that's bypassed by this capacitor and like I said this guy on a forum was swearing that with a 15k resistor in here this thing will put out 8 watts we're fixing to see whether that's true or not so stay tuned 